Hi friends! In this video, I wanted to discuss with you how you can leverage ChatGPT to be more productive, efficient, and creative. ChatGPT is an interface that allows you to interact with a large language model. In simple terms, it just looks like a chat where you can ask anything, and it is going to generate an answer for you. The fascinating thing is that its answers are pretty good, and so far I've only seen it a couple of times fail with very specific tasks, and overall I have a great impression of the tool. In fact, I use it daily with a various type of things for work, for learning new things, for learning languages, just for general curiosity, you know, like exploring things. And I personally think that anyone can benefit from using this tool. So in this video, I wanted to share some of my use cases, maybe inspire you, how you can use this tool, and also to share some tips on how you can be even more efficient while using the tool. I don't think that ChatGPT is going to replace us, but rather it can enhance us and can be a great tool in our toolbox, so we'd better learn how to use it. If you're interested, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, let's keep watching. And let's start with repetitive tasks. One of the first things that I started doing with ChatGPT is actually correcting my grammar, uh, because I'm not a native English speaker and I may not have the perfect grammar all the time, and also my choice of words can be off, and I wanted ChatGPT to help me with that, to correct my mistakes, and also generate alternative ways to say the same so I can learn new words. And this task became quite repetitive uh, very quickly because I had to say the same over and over again, correct my grammar, come up with alternative ways and that kind of stuff. And for this kind of tasks, I find it useful to set up uh, a chat at the beginning so it is ready to complete a certain repetitive task. To set up a chat, you just need to send your first messages with your directions, with whatever you want this particular chat to do for you. So for me, for language correction, it was a good way to start this chat by just saying that I will be sending sentences or text in English and I want you to evaluate my grammar, um, my choice of words, and maybe rephrase it. As an example, I will just use a small text that I created as a part of a review for my building where I live, and let's see what will be the result. So it corrected me, it generated, it rephrased me, it generated alternative ways to express the same idea, and also explanation of my mistakes. I think it can be su something super valuable to someone who is learning a new language, who may be already advanced, but still wants to learn from their mistakes. Another great way to utilize the chat for language learners, again, is to set up a chat for learning new English vocabulary. So again, sometimes when you find a new word, you may want to have the definition, examples, maybe synonyms or words with the opposite meaning, and you can set up a chat by giving all these directions, and uh, then just instead of saying same things over and over again, you just use it to check out the new words that you're finding and want to learn. For instance, I just recently learned a new, new verb to jinx, and uh, here we go. Definition, examples, alternative ways of saying jinx, antonyms for jinx, etc. And uh, another way that I use it to automate some of the repetitive tasks is a more creative one, is to generate a search engine optimization friendly description for my YouTube videos. So you know how each video has some text under it in the description. This is not something I think many people read and it is not intended to be read by humans. I think it is mostly there to just have these keywords so the video can rank by these keywords so people can find relative information when they search for something. So for me, I don't see this as a very creative process, as something I want to invest a lot of time in. I just want it to be there for search engine optimization. And so what I like to do is to, again, set up a chat 
where I say that I'm going to be sending my scripts and please summarize them in a way so it looks search engine optimization friendly. And uh, as an example, we can have one of my short videos on a different channel. If I pass my description, it is going to generate titles, list of tags, and the description itself. I don't always just take it and paste it though. I like to use it more as a foundation, just something to go off of. And uh, I rephrase, I change something because it is not always perfect. It is not gonna generate the most accurate thing uh, going off the, like this small description that I provided. But it is definitely something that is super useful and saves me time. Uh, I guess there are a lot of a lot of different use cases that you can have. Maybe there are some repetitive tasks or small things at work. Uh, maybe as a developer, I could set up a chat that would I will and I will say to it, "Hey, I'll be sending small pieces of code, and uh, you will need to explain me line by line what this means." So this is how you can use it as a developer to learn a certain code base and that kind of stuff. So I encourage you to look for different small repetitive tasks maybe at work or in your personal life and to set up a chat that would be responsible for helping you with this small repetitive task. We live in the world where it is important to keep learning things. It is unlikely that you're gonna learn everything at school and be done with studying. And one of my favorite use cases for ChatGPT is to use it for learning new things. And especially it can benefit people who are learning things on their own because this tool, it does not only provide you the information, but it also allows you to ask follow-up questions, to ask all the stupid but super important questions to understand new concepts. Let's see this in action. Let's say you're learning how to code and you can actually use ChatGPT to ask for most important concepts within web development. Just go there and ask to generate most important concepts within web development. And from that answer that it generates, you can go even further. You can ask questions like, what's this? What's that? Expand on this point, on that point. And I think it is a very good start for someone who have no idea about the field. But also people who are more experienced can also benefit from this. Another example, I was learning a new library and I asked ChatGPT to generate me a list of the most popular methods within the library so I can start with something that is widely used or when I decided to learn a new language Swift I had a hard time understanding a concept and I just you know I just gave it a piece of code and asked for its explanation and asked a couple of follow-up questions to give you a different use case this is how you can learn a new language with ChatGPT you can go to ChatGPT and ask to generate conversational topics that you should know to be able to call yourself A1 or A2 level in, let's say, Spanish. And it's going to generate a list of things you should have the vocabulary for to be able to talk about the topics. The great thing about it is that you can dive deeper and you can ask generate sentences for each of these topics. You can also provide some of your information, like name, maybe your age, things that you like to do. So it's gonna generate personalized sentences for you. What I like about it is that it's not just generic, you know, random sentences from a language book, but these are sentences that are personalized, sentences that you can use right away. Yes, there is no pronunciation. You're not gonna be able to hear it, so maybe, this use case, it's not going to be helpful to learn a completely new language that you're just not familiar with anyhow. For me, this would be any Asian language, while Spanish would uh, be a great example to use ChatGPT for. So I recognize this shortcoming and you should probably use different tools to generate this pronunciation to be able to hear it. But the beauty of these personalized sentences is that they can get you to speaking sooner rather than later because you're going to be learning things that you can just use right away. Or another example for, I guess, more advanced users, uh, language learners, not users, is that you can ask it uh, to generate certain 
vocabulary for certain occasions. For instance, what is the vocabulary I need to know before going into a dentist office? It's been a huge struggle for me to go to get medical help here in the United States just from the linguistic perspective. And also I always rejected uh, getting a translator. I always wanted to be able to learn this vocabulary myself. And ChatGPT can be a great tool to prepare yourself for things like this. Or if you're just starting to learn a language, you can ask, what's the vocabulary I could know before I go into my first Spanish lesson or any other lesson so you can already learn something before you go to the lesson. Some of the questions that I like to ask when I start learning something. What are the most important concepts in this? What's this? Generate three explanations from basic to more detailed. How does this work and what are its main components? What are some common misconceptions about this? What are the advantages and disadvantages of using this? How is this related to other fields or areas of study? The answers to these questions can give you some pretty good high-level idea of the field. It can direct you. It should not be the only source, uh, but it can direct your choice of other material like books, article, research to explore this new field that you're trying to explore. Now, creativity. You can use ChatGPT to brainstorm and to boost your creativity. Here, one of the use cases for me is YouTube. Uh, you gotta have ideas for your videos uh, to be able to record these videos, right? And sometimes it may be hard to come up with new, fresh ideas, and especially if you've been doing this for some time. So I like to use ChatGPT to brainstorm with me. One of the prompts that I used is to actually generate me uh, ideas for my YouTube channel. I gave some information about me, like, you know, some things I could talk about, and it generated a huge list of ideas for me. Again, you can always ask for more, you can ask to regenerate, you can provide some more additional information. Uh, be careful though to provide personal information for it to generate ideas. You can also ask it to generate speaking points for an idea that you already have. Uh, for instance, what could I say in a video with the following title? How I use ChatGPT to be more productive. Or you can ask it for maybe help with research or books. If you already have an idea and you want to explore the topic, uh, you can ask to help you find research about that or this or book that talked about this. And of course, random curiosity, random questions. I use ChatGPT as a quick way to ask my random questions and explore things or to complete a small daily task like how do I boil eggs? Can you explain me the concept of time? What's the internet? Can you generate me a list of books to read based on my favorites and that kind of thing? There are a lot of small things. Uh, I used to use Google for, but now I find it simpler to just ask ChatGPT if I don't really need a very thorough explanation and if I don't want to look into books for this particular small random things. This is everything I wanted to share with you today. Write down in the comments how you use ChatGPT and uh, what's your favorite use case for anything, maybe also coding or learning a language. Share with us, it'll, it'll be fun to learn from you too. I did not want to seem like I am a fangirl of ChatGPT, I am not. I just find it super useful and I am curious to, I guess, see how it develops with a little bit of fear, I must admit, but also with uh, fascination and curiosity. Thank you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, subscribe to my channel for more and I'll catch you in my next one.